Nice to see you. So I look at your notes and you say this is not necessarily the start of something worse once we hit the fall. I think we've come a long way in a year and a half uh, in terms of appreciating that the bear market is likely behind us, as we believe, and that we're back to seeing a normal period of volatility in equity markets from time to time. So a 5% pullback once a quarter, a 10% pullback once a year within uh, a bull market. And that's where we think we are. Um, since late July, we think this is some good old-fashioned profit taking. Uh, you, you can really see that by the underperformance of those companies and sectors that had led before, whether it's large cap tech, semiconductors, home builders, or more recently even banks. Um, so ultimately how far this goes, we'll have to see. It's seasonally a weak period and it will very much depend on what happens with earnings and CPI in the weeks ahead. But ultimately we still have a constructive view of stocks from here. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. You sound more positive on the market than you have been since we've been having these conversations. Yes. And that has really changed since the end of May. Because we, like a lot of people, had come into this year expecting a hard landing. Or it was always a conversation about a mild recession, mm -hmm. but there was an expectation of a recession taking hold mid-year, combined with margin pressure on the earning side. And since then, we've had substantially better data on the macro front, showing a normalization of the labor market, but not a collapse. So that can still support positive consumption at the same time that we've had better data on the inflation front, especially June and July, super core increasing only 0.2 percent. We've also had better earnings data. Mm -hmm. uh, if you exclude energy and materials, energy's actually uh, earnings actually grew in the second quarter. So we have now uh, come around to this view of a soft landing as the base case of the earnings recession being behind us and for it making more sense to take on more risk on the equity side especially. The problem with all of that, and it's all of course valid, is that what you've also gotten? Higher yields. And that's been the picture of late, right? Since the start of earnings season to today, the yield on the 10 years up 50 basis points. The market's clearly unsettled about where rates are. Stronger economy perhaps means higher yields than maybe we thought and higher perhaps for longer than we want. Mm. What do we do with that? I think our conversations with investors the past two weeks have been entirely about this move in long end yields. And there being a lot of confusion about why that's happening. And I think, first of all, it's been a sudden move, 60 basis points since mid-July. But mm -hmm. it's also been the lack of clear understanding why. And if we translate that to stocks, not all reasons why yields go up are the same for stocks. Some are more uh, positive than others. If it's really driven by a fear of a no landing or a reacceleration that's inflationary, that's not good. Well, but isn't that like a legit fear at this point? We think that one is a bit overplayed, uh, shall we say? The no landing idea. The no landing idea. First, Too strong economy for everybody to handle. For everybody to handle. First, if you look at break evens, they've only moved higher 10 basis points, so it doesn't seem like it's really driven by higher inflation expectations. And then on the growth side, this idea that we're actually going to get third quarter GDP of 6% seems very, very unlikely. Historically, when the Atlanta Fed GDP now is over 4%, it usually at this point overestimates growth by two percentage points. We're still expecting a normalization of activity, especially consumption of services. That's a soft landing, not a no landing. Okay. Um, you need Jay Powell, the Fed chair, and, and his panel to be your friend <laughs> from here on out, don't you? Right? I mean, you, in terms of Jackson Hole, a few days from now, what's the risk? The risk is that he's more hawkish than the market's willing to accept, right? I think more recently, there's been an interesting conversation that's taking place. Rather than about the no landing fears, it's migrated into a conversation about our star. So what is, in today's economy, uh, a neutral real rate? And I think that's where there's an expectation there could be some interesting academic papers published at Jackson Hole. So we'll be reading those uh, on Friday and over the weekend. And really, it's about why our star could be higher? Is it because we've gotten better news on productivity? That's a good thing, actually, for stocks. Mm -hmm. And how high has that R star gone up Fit from 50 basis points real rates 
to 200. That seems very sudden. So we really think it's just marginally higher. And that's an environment that stocks can do quite well. Actually. I know. But what if we thought what was the neutral rate was a, a good place to be? The stronger economic growth that you, you know, rightfully cite suggests that the neutral rate isn't high enough. I think what we're really expecting for the second half of the year is OK growth. So I think we get asked, is good news bad news? Is bad news good news? OK news is good news. So it's really a story of normalization and growth, a little bit subtrend, uh, a little bit below 2%. Mm-hmm. Higher rates are still having an impact. And rates at nearly 5.5% are still way too restrictive, given that implies a 200 basis point real rate. So we can see rate cuts even in a soft landing scenario. Is that your, your playbook? You think we're going to get rate cuts? And if so, when? We do. And I think it's less about a mispricing for 2024. The Fed's likely going to take its time next year. 100 basis points sounds fair. It's more about the estimate for 2025, which by the end of 2025, investors are pricing in rates at 4%. That's that 200 basis point real rate that to us doesn't make sense. Settling in something closer to 50 to 100 basis points real rates or rates closer to 3% seems more reasonable. And that's why we've been advocating for adding duration Mm -hmm. as, as a nice hedge also against that more positive equity view.